It's the weekly 3030 trading list on the ASX. We're reviewing the 30 best momentum companies over the last quarter and the companies that have had the best momentum improvement this week, what we call the launchpad companies that are setting up for a run. Gary Glover has been through the list and pulled out his favorite charts to discuss this, this week. Good morning, Gary. How are you? Yeah, I'm great, Chris. So you've been through the list. You've looked at the momentum ones. You've looked at the top 30 launch pad. When you're looking at it, is there anything that's standing out to you this week, different to last week or in the markets? Uh, the only thing I, I noticed actually, a lot of the stocks we spoke about last week, Chris, uh, I think um, there's sort of six on here that I marked from last week, um, which was, um, yeah, which are, which are, I've stayed pretty firm, actually uh, moved up again. So um, that's a good sign that we've seen the right things on the chart. So there are uh, yeah, quite a few that were highlighted last week have actually sort of kicked on there. Um, so again, just that strength, pause, low volume, and then obviously, you know, continuing to go there. I think the only one that didn't sort of move there was that KAI, KAI which is pulled back here. Um, but I think most of the others went pretty hard there. I think AW1 we looked at last week that was like had that really tight you know pull back there pretty low volume and now now the volume sort of coming again um there was a zs which we, we identified last week and it's had pretty small pauses there and it's kicked on there again it's that a leaders continuing to keep leading the lrs was on there was in the list last week it's Continue to move on. I'm not sure I covered that one too much. They were pretty pretty quick on that. COB was one that I definitely covered there. And just having this little pretty strong move on, good volume there, a little bit of a pause on light volume again. Um, still looks pretty constructive as well. Um, Ian uh, was the other one there. It's had a really nice little pause there. Very, very light volume. We just spoke about how, how, how thin that volume was. So I had literally that one day. I think if we look at that one, one day of selling at the top, at the high, and then nothing, just dried up here, and uh, you know, so that's 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 what you're always looking for, looking for that really, you know, really strong breadth of um, moves, impulsive, big volume, maybe one day of selling, and then volume dries up there. Um, so yeah, that, that, that's pretty, pretty decent. Still, still, still a reasonably constructive, and the volume starts to light up a little bit. That's often more. We'll be that towards the end there, and I think BEZ was the other one we covered last week as well. Um, hasn't kicked on too much there, but still stayed all right here. This is one that I was sort of probably was indicating that it's pretty light volume through here, so it's one I'd be pretty pretty careful about. Um, up on, another one there, I sort of saw on the on the list there. Um, Wildcat there, I just so again, just just be careful this now because now we've had a pretty strong run. Last thing on the chart here is this look at this rally, Chris. The last four or five days here. No yeah, very, very light here. So that that should be a warning sign. If you're long that sort of stop it's very, very light there. You'd be, be wanting to tighten the stops right up there. Um it's not what you don't want to sort of see that. Um bigger ports obviously had a nice run there, sort of you know, still struggling under ten there. Might maybe might consolidate under ten, but still fairly constructive. Um, LPD, sort of small one there, looks okay without being fantastic. MM1, um, yeah, some good volume through that first move. Had a bit of a pullback there, but probably come back a little deep, a little bit time consuming there, but it has, has turned up and gone again. It's something we're sort of seeing with quite a few of these here. Um, ARL. Again, some good volume there, bit of a bit of a tight consolidation there so far. Sort of consolidating upwards there, which is which is interesting. Normally, you prefer to sort of see them consolidate sort of down and a little bit of a flag there, um, but still not you know not really seeing any selling here so far, Chris. Um, so they can you know sometimes the consolidation um, different different manners. Um, so are you concerned that it's rising on small volume, or it's just that it's it's mildly going up and it's still below the high yeah i prefer to see it run up hot and then do a little you know tight little flag and a downward slope and then pop out the outside that that's the, that's my preferred look 
Um, but seen here with these VCPs, that as long as the pullback gets smaller and smaller here, we're just looking for light volume now. I mean, you know, so we've had that one day of selling here, no, nothing else there so far. So not bad volume through here, but uh, look, probably a bit small for me personally, but nothing wrong with that so far here. Um, TNC, pretty new stock here, Chris. I mean, I think sometimes we, we did did look at a couple of floats there back or oh, probably three months ago that um, they came out early there and consolidated them. You know, that's, that's pretty good volume there. Like, again, you'd probably want to see the B-Wave break here. That would be my little sort of starting sort of thing there. But sometimes these new ones, can they can run early here. That's not a bad block of volume there. Um, just want to see it, you know, break above the B-Wave. So sometimes those, those early ones can, can move like that. So... Definitely one to keep an eye on there. I think um, TNC's True North Copper. Obviously, everyone's, everyone's yeah talking about copper there. Um, DUG was the one that sort of stood out here when I was going for that list there. And geez, look at the um, you know this is what we want to see. We want to see impulsive move up, corrective sideways, impulsive move up, corrective sideways, impulsive move up, corrective sideways. So these are the little VCPs in there. A little tight ink formation and then pop you know, tight here. So right again, so still yeah, still seeing some pretty good volume on the way up here. Uh, what about the moving averages on that? How do you view moving averages for that kind of move? Yeah, so look at that. You know, the 50 is perfect, isn't it, really? So it's just once once it's uh, we've got obviously that a coil in here and a little bit of a break up here. So probably then this is your maybe breaking out of your B wave here and your, your first sort of consolidation period. You might want to see it break here, you know, another high here to, to get confirmation there, which it's sort of done there. A um, bit bit lighter on here, but I think things sort of kept running here. The, the, the beauty here is the ones that's crossed it, it's, uh, it's not too many. There is actually no, there's actually no close below the 50 day moving average. So, uh, yeah, interesting now. I mean, I so, so we talked about last week, and I'm actually applying this a lot more in my own trading is that, um, I mean, the, the 50, I, I, I definitely want to be buying stocks above the 50. Um, there's only one exception for me buying stocks below the 50. That's that sort of false break on the big caps, everything else. So I basically have to be sort of um, really looking for a breakout on that. That sort of stocks that should be sort of trending up. And then once once these sort of stocks are moving here, um, you know, the strong ones there, they're, you know, they're coming back to the 20, coming back to the 20, you know, so... Um, the real ones that are really flying high there, like Satire, which is on the list as well, there, number 30 there. Seen here, we, we talked about this last week, Chris. So, when this thing sort of when this sort, sort of runs out, it runs tight above the above the 10 day. So, you know, it's pretty, been pretty, pretty aggressive stock here. Once it break below the 10, that's when it's had a correction. Same in here, it's sort of hugged the 10. Once it's closed below the 10, it's had a correction. This thing's run again. Just closed below the below the sort of ten day moving average this week. That, that, that you should be out. So you know if you're if you're following this stock here, um, short term momentum, um, that's that's a negative sign here. Just by closing above it, a low here should have been. If you're a momentum trader and you're trading this sort of you know shorter term, um, that's that's the sort of signal you don't want to see. So you're just sort of saying with these sort of stronger stocks there, they'll they'll definitely sort of. I'll have one or two of those uh, moving averages, maybe the ten or the twenty. The ones that are really fired up like this will be the will be the ten. Something like three sixty, which obviously has been strong, but it it, um, it has sort of you know come back to the usually it will come back to the twenty here. So come back to the twenty. You know, I think it sort of came back here, did did finish below, but then then bounced back and recovered there. A little VCP in here just holding the twenty, and then then we go again. And if you go back and look at the stock here, you'll, you'll see that it's got a history of hugging that sort of stock. See, sounds funny, but you've got to, got to learn the personality of the stock as well. Each of the stock will have its own, um, you know, things that it does there. Um, what do we got there? XAM. Um, bit, bit, of a, bit, bit of a tight consolidation. Some, some pretty big volume through here, Chris, this one. And a bit of a BCP in here as well. So, you know, getting a bit of a pullback. Shorter pullback, shorter again. And then all throughout this whole period here, pretty light volume there. And all of a sudden we got this little pop here, some volume. 
inside day no volume and then the big pop here so this, this still looks quite good that's that's I mean, obviously that's pretty good volume the volume's less there but that's still pretty healthy so nothing wrong with it so far um so that's still pretty constructive there and um, some... so you've got the four days ago the volume started going up breaking out out of the congestion but yeah for that how important is it those sort of two weeks where it's been fairly tight closes and low volume how do you read that kind of compression? The um, so in in here, you mean Tom? This in yeah, that that yeah, type yeah, there. yeah. And it's too, I mean, things are like here is um, yeah. You know, it's, it's funny you're talking about the fifty day for that. Yeah, you know, come back here once it's broken out. It's come back to retest the fifty, built here. Come back, tag the fifty, and gone again. I mean, it's just it's it's you know, well, sometimes we make this well much more complicated than it really needs to be. Um, and, you know, I'm sort of probably I've been using these moving averages for probably 18 months to two years now. But, yeah, it's just it's just starting to, you know, because you're sort of starting to use them a lot in the tools and see see where the price comes back to, you know, quite interesting. Yeah, but the key thing is just, yeah, you just see that sort of congestion there, have a bit of a, you know, a bit of a correction, a bit of a pause, and then, you know, you want to see it tighten up. And then you're almost looking, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to look at, I'm not even looking at the price here, I'm looking at the volume. And look for those days where the you know, you know, where the volume's almost non-existent. And it's funny how if you actually look at charts and look at charts, but I, all I do is spend days looking through hundreds of charts. When you see that congestion, that that pause, you'll almost see the day of just nothingness, you know. So that's the day. That's usually like you see see the day like that, or or this one here. Right now that those are the days. Well. That's when you should be on your on your guard there, because that's like it's had a correction here, it's had a bit of a pause. Basically, the selling is completely just dried up here now. So now you're looking for signs that this might go up. So when you probably you know if you're a trader there, you might be drilling into your half hourly somewhat. Um, but yeah, it's interesting that sort of volume side there. Um, last on the list was Playside Studios. I, I actually did trade this one, Chris, but I I did get spooked out of this one because I was watching this um, you know again it's had a nice little tight price action there change of character broke out of the the sort of downtrend but okay that's that's pretty good pulled back in here come back come back here I thought oh okay congesting in there stayed pretty tight in here I thought okay wow this looks like a VCP we just need to break above this level um, to go long here and then all of a sudden we had this shakeout day where it went down a little bit further. It's probably, I think the price range might have been slightly, so what's that, 33 to 45, so 12 cents. I think this was 41 down to 32, so it might be 9 cents. That's so probably probably still still a VCP, but I, I just didn't like that. It's really, I would like to see a bit tighter there, but, you know, um, so I didn't end up putting much of a position on because I was sort of like, you know, it's not, not, not ideal, but you know, it's just once it's broken above this little, you know, little B wave in here, it's, it's really, it's really got going. It's actually quite good volume in there so far. And considering the NASDAQ was hit pretty hard here last night, this has held up pretty well. So, um, yeah, it's good to show you just got to, you know, follow those sort of patterns there. But, um, those are the, um, the quarterly. Uh, momentum there some of the small ones there on the list most of these sort of probably not giving me great signals there there's a couple in there are okay but most of them are sort of um most of them tell you to put put these stocks on my watch list because they're maybe not quite ready yet but they could be soon um five ea is sort of maybe still hasn't broken a swing high in here has gone above the 50 just now again here a little bit of exhausted volume on the on the low here it needs needs to sort of show a bit more first, so we just want to just want to watch that one um, going forward. Um, was watching Frontier Digital pretty closely there. I just yeah, thing is, look at the volumes down here. It's pretty pretty heavy. So sort of signs of accumulation taking place here. So so again, we've sort of got our little ABC here. So we've um, I'll be watching these price levels pretty closely. So this this one's on my list. I haven't you, know, you could have traded this little B wave break here maybe. Um, it's not really my sort of typical setup I look for, um, but now for me now it's a bit of a watch here because there's actually 
this has sort of had a change of character, has broken up here, and there's big volume. There's actually people pushing out. There's some. That's that's to me. That's that's sort of accumulation taking place at those lower levels, which you know we don't see that. We don't see big moves generally, and the stocks that do end up having big moves, we we often see these big lines of volume down down at the lows. So, so to me, this is one to keep an eye on here. But we want to see some little VCP in here, some congestion there, maybe sit on top of the old piles, something a bit more constructive. But that stock definitely goes on my list now to be to be watching pretty closely, just because there is potential um, change there. MGX, um, yeah, interesting man. So obviously it's um. A bit of a strong downtrend there has popped up in the range there does sort of have a history of sort of popping up come back um come back again so maybe it's sort of congesting here so this possible vcp candidate so goes into my vc possible vcp uh, watch list um keep, keep an eye on that see if it sets up over the next month there uh, it's a, quite a few stocks actually making um yeah even something like grain corp here dnc it's had a pullback there Pull back little VCP and now it's pretty good volume there. It's actually broken above the B wave today. Um, but yes, plenty of stocks um, that are making this sort of um, VCP patterns. Quite a few larger ones too, I've noticed. So pretty constructive price action across, you know, a lot of a lot of stocks at the moment. So um, yeah, QTE is a bit small. Uh, Tyro was in there. You know, I did see this little little pennant flag in here. So. Did have a little bit you know, of little move. The volume's not awesome there, but it did dry up here on lighter volume, and then then pop again. And look, the thing's gone from. Yeah, you, know, you could you could have bought this. Yeah, one fifteen, one sixteen out of that range there. It's, it's gone to high forty. So yeah, it's a trade trade that I missed there. I just sort of probably uh yeah, I was just looking for higher quality um, stocks to be long. But um, what the fifty day does that come into the equation as well? Yeah, it does there. It does. It does for sure. Yeah, just sort of buying those lows. I, I do like to sort of see those sort of tight pennant flags and stuff in there. That's sort of, um, look, those are sort of still on my playlist. Um, I just prefer to see them above the 50. And I just prefer to see the, you know, sort of leading stocks as well. I'm not sure there's a leading theme, but, um, but yeah, these are the ones in the past. Just some of these smaller ones have sort of caught me recently, sort of trading them. So I've just been trying to. We've been trying to stick with the leaders there. And, yeah, I mean, look, it's, it's work, been working for me the last few weeks. I'm sort of, at the moment, I think I've, I'm like 90% invested. I literally, I think half my stocks are sort of at break even or above. And I've got two stocks that sort of, I think, that aren't at break even, that are sort of at my 1% and half percent risk. So at the moment, I've, I've literally got, I think I've got 1% of risk. Out there percent portfolio with ninety percent of the portfolio on, so I'm like it's almost like I just go on holidays and just see what happens. So I'm either going to lose one percent, but my portfolio. If the market turns down, everything gets knocked out. Probably knock out two of them for a medium sized profit, and knock out a couple for break even, knock out maybe one or two for a, a loss. And I'll be in hundred percent cash, and I'll only be down one percent. Whereas if it all runs here. The risk reward at the moment. I've got some big risk reward trades on at the moment, but they're actually pretty nice. So I sort of like it's that whole. I just got to sit on my sit on my hands now, so um, don't do too much. Don't, don't try and look too much. Um, still looking around, but yeah, just just got to let the trades um, do what they're going to do. Um, that's the, the hard thing there is, um, it, yeah, just sort of sitting there. It's, um, yeah. it's funny. I was actually listening to a podcast here this morning I was, I was going to talk about some of these um oh yeah daniel daniel Coleman, sort of the you know human traits that are all there's uh, <laughs> plenty of sort of you know weaknesses in human nature there but i was listening to this podcast it's all about um card counting so it was one of the guys from uh, the movie 21 um so it wasn't um wasn't ever what's his name uh, it wasn't thought uh it was one of, one of the guys actually it was actually it was the guy in the, in the movie um sort of based on him and just talking about, you know, and just sort of saying, you know, what, you know, what would you look for? You know, if you're looking for sort of someone who's good at, you know, counting cards and you know, betting on the cards and all the rest of it. So like, really you need someone who's disciplined, you need someone who puts in the time and preparation. So you basically do plenty of study, 
Um, you do plenty of reps, so basically just trying to get your skill level up. Um, and then having the mental um, endurance, being able to you know, stay alert, stay, you know, and then mental fortitude to sort of wear out the gyration of stuff then. It's like, you know, there's sort of these, um, you know, these, well, the, these, these, these guys are trading blackjack sort of systems there. It's, um, yeah, the, the, the best blackjack players there have got the same traits there that, that you, that you need in trading, uh, hundred percent. It's, um, it's weird actually. I saw, sort of, I'm not, I'm not sure. I haven't really told us, probably haven't told you the story there, but I did actually learn some blackjack, um, when I was in my teens, I sort of, I was dating a girl in, in Queensland there and, um, her dad and another, um, guy with that, they were basically well, basically, um, pilots there, so basically flying around the country, just staying at all the casinos. And over the years, they they learned the game. So, if you don't understand blackjack, you just play the blackjack hands without sort of any um, any knowledge there. That the, the edge is all with the house. But the game of blackjack, there is sort of uh, there's times there where you can actually bet up. Um, and if you learn what they call like the matrix there, there is like a statistical matrix there of sort of when you should buy a card, um, when you should hit, when you should sort of sit. And there's, so there's a matrix there, mathematical matrix there, which does actually improve your odds significantly, uh, which most people would never able to look at. Um, so it's too honest to their game. They sort of had this matrix where you learn, learn, learn the odds, learn the rules. It basically sort of gives you your little edge. They had something else really, really clever. They had a betting strategy. So these sort of, um, you know, these, these are lovely guys, but these guys drank a lot of Bundy for itself. Big uh, Queensland drinkers. And, you know, so uh, I don't want to refer to them as drunk pilots there, but like, these guys drank, drank a lot. They were just um, probably, you know. They were at the time. No, no, they were flying at the time. No, they just, they just loved their rum. And they loved gambling. And I tell you what, these guys, are, you know, I look at it years later, we used to we used to sort of train it. We used to sort of practice at home for hours. So we basically learn the matrix, play play hands, and we play the strategy. So this had like a it was a two three five strategy. So you bet two if you lost, you, you bet two. Um, if you won, you basically bet three, and if you won, you bet five. So it's two three five, and you keep playing five until you lost, and then start again. And so it's a pretty interesting sort of strategy there, sort of. That two things that could happen here is if you had three losses in a row, you move to another table, and if you had three losses in a row again, you go home, you're out. If you had three wins on your five, you kept betting the five until you go. So as soon as you had three wins on five, I mean, my max bet, so you'd have two, three, five, 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 so there would be twenty units. You would keep betting until you lost, and then you go home. So you either go home a small loser, or you go home a big winner. So it's a, it's a really it's fascinating principles there that we sort of learned. I learned this since probably I was about 18, 19. And I sort of, you know, laugh at the time. I mean, we had, I had a great time. We'd go to the casino and play hands and we'd either go home a small loser or a big winner. But I look back now, you know, the, the last five years of sort of trading, I just keep keep actually thinking about those principles. It's bizarre. Um, at least a couple of Queensland sort of uh, pilots there sort of stumbled on those sort of Again, the, the matrix is out there. Everyone can find that batting strategy alongside that. Really, sort of, you know, and, it, and it comes a lot. Of, it's really about sort of you know things to me about like trend trading as well. Because really, when you when you in like the markets, they're messy for a while, and then when they trend, they get hot. And it's pr- probably the same for blackjack and cards as well. You know, dealer wins one, you win one, dealer wins one. And all of a sudden, one thing or two things will happen here is that uh, either the the dealer gets on a run and then you get smashed or you get on a run um, and, and you smash the dealer. But you need a mechanism to capture one of those to minimize if it's if it's him and maximize if it's you. And so a lot of those principles are pretty good. I mean, you're playing cards there too. You actually you have to put the, the blind on too. So you actually have to play every hand. Whereas the trader, he doesn't have to play every hand. He can sit out. He's got sit out power, um, you know, so... Um, yeah, a lot, lot of, you know, it's made me really think there's a lot of benefits there. You know, so anyone sort of maybe learn how to play a bit of blackjack is probably not a bad idea for, for, for the trading. Um, you do need to take the emotion out of the trading as well. That's one of the big things there. So you can you can take your emotionality out of it. If you can't control your emotions in trading, I, I would say you're not going to make it personally. Um, so 
need to, need to do your reps, get your skill up, get comfortable with it with the strategy, and then yeah. It sounds like the betting the two three five the two th- sounds a bit like a Jesse Livermore probe trade and the fives and consistently betting five a bit like the pyramiding that he would do as well. Yeah, different but similar concept. Just keep the losses small and the when it's wins in your favour, you bet big. Yeah, I went to Vegas about ten years ago. I signed for like a fortieth for some mates and uh, one of the guys I travel with. We we I, I was teaching him on the plane on the way over there. We had the, had the betting betting cards, the sh- card games on the screen in front of us. I was sort of teaching him the rules. So we went over there. We only played one night in Vegas, but we both absolutely cleaned up. So we were just, the, you know, we were trolling away, trolling away, trolling away. And then a new dealer came on. And then he was, we just had this, oh, probably the best run I've ever seen. And um, yeah, we ended up, I think there was like eight of us over there. So we ended up, I think eight of us were on the same comedy of the whole table. <laughs> And, uh, but once once it sort of won, then I'd sort of bank that, and I thought, okay, just put the, put the less the rest there for fun. But um, but yeah, the, the principles are um, you know, pretty much the same. So um, like makes me think about it all the time. Actually, yeah, good. Yeah. Um, so what have we got there? Not too many left here, really. Um, I think I saw HLO was another travel stock here, Chris. This is another another BCP in here. So we get another big stock here. So pull back here, second pull back third pullback in here so we're still we can sort of congesting even though we've broken below the 50 here the whole thing is sort of congesting up here now we've gone just above the wave yesterday about one cent so maybe you'll get a little kick back in here this is pretty constructive sort of pattern there you look at that weekly too as well so you really got this whole thing you know it's congesting under the high here so all of that you know and we, we want to see this tight price action press under the high as well so that there's nothing wrong with it. This actually looks pretty good. So it's up at the recent high, but it's also pretty much sitting on the high in March, is it? Yeah. Yeah. So you've got like, that's been a big high with the stock here now. <laughs> Normally, like one of, one of the GAN rules actually is that, um, you know, price action goes to, you know, test the level once, it'll, it'll you know, pull back, go second time. Um, the third time you can get a, you can actually get a fast reaction on the third time. So you can hit the, hit the third one and get a fast move down. But if it goes back to a fourth attempt at the high, one one of the gain rules is just to buy. So you don't even don't even don't even wait for the break. Once it starts moving back towards the fourth one, just just get on and go with it. Um, and that fourth attempt of a, of a price zone, whether it's daily or half hourly or or you know the weekly chart, there um, pretty pretty positive there. So this is the David Ryan sort of you know tight congestion under the high as well, which we like to sort of see. So. Um, I think I saw NWL here is actually oh, there's another one there actually that's sort of making up look how look how tight that price action is there. That's had a few goes of the high here, trying to trying to break through a bit of volume there. There was a bit of a jump there last week and a bit of a shake here, but we know there it's, um, when you see those 52 week highs, sometimes you get like a five percent reaction, just to shake out the weekends. <laughs> um, so. I did shake out half of my hand this little this little reaction, but I I managed to sort of um, put my my hand back on. Um, but yeah, I've, you know, get, you get to have stops, you know, you, gotta, you know, you get about to sort of wear a little bit of pain there. But I so I was expecting a little bit of a shakedown, just just a little large that I, you know than I that I thought. But this this often happens there. You know, markets there to sort of test us there, shake us out. Um, now, if we're building into positions, starts to say too, then you shouldn't be too much risk there as well. But um, we're definitely seeing, you know, there's a, another little um, little VCP in there as well, GMD. So on the list as well, number nineteen. So pull back here, come back retest, little little pull back here, little, you know, this pullback smaller, smaller again, and then we're sort of breaking our B wave here. What what do we see through here, Chris? Yeah, that volume's just red. That's big. That's big volume, so that's 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 pretty constructed there. So um, yeah, it's pretty pretty interesting there. And again, sort of got this whole thing on the weekly too congesting under there. The whole thing on if you look at the the whole structure of that trend there, it's just the whole thing's just come back and sat on top of the previous high. From a trend perspective, there it's still pretty robust there. I'm seeing pretty good volume here, so I thought, oh yeah, that looks pretty good as well. So, so seeing 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 some commonality patterns and seeing some pretty good. Plenty of BCP sort of setups on the 
on the dailies and weeklies for some of the bigger stocks as well. So it's pretty pretty constructive there. Um, so quite seller. Obviously, you've had a nice jump here, so it's sort of leading that that airline there. So the one that I did like there, but just not really the right technical pattern for me personally. Um, but I thought flight center and corporate travel both quality stocks had pulled me back. Um, Poly Novo's had a nice sort of move there. But, um, I was watching this here. There's a little BCP in there, too, Chris, sort of pulled back. Pulled, you know, went, came back here. I thought, okay, there's going to be a little BCP in there. Come back here, actually went half a cent or maybe a cent lower. So made a little false break in here and then got going in here. I thought once I got up here, I thought, oh, this just sort of, you know, has two or three days, a little third congestion there. That'll be just prime. But it's ended up pushing through, but now it's having a little pause as well here. So this is one to keep an eye on here, Leonovo. Um, so pretty tight so far, pretty pretty light selling here so far. So just want to see that little rock congestion there, but that's pretty constructive as well. Um, ALD was the last one there. I think that was spelled the old Ampol. Um, but again, yeah, but ABC might be, might be a bit of a VCP in there as well. Um, and then, yeah, just, you know, kind of cracking above a little B wave. There's some okay volume in there. It's not going to move like like momentum stocks is, but constructive price action. So just, you know, it's, it's amazing. Sort of, it's, it's a lot of constructive price action out there across the board. And I know banks have had a good run here and they're probably going to, you know, maybe congest a bit here. So it's definitely some stocks that have led here. But what we should start to see here is now is um, we've seen the bigs lead this market here and that's some big moves. They'll have a bit of pausing. We're starting to see some of the mids getting involved here. The smalls really haven't got involved in so much. So I think we saw the last couple of weeks some of the smalls were popping up from the um, the weekly momentum there. So we start to see we should start to see a few more smalls in there, but should start to see a mix here now. So should really seeing things should should be congesting, pulling back, but just seeing lots of constructive price action there. So I'm sort of um, you know reasonably blown about the price action there. I love the fact last night the Dow went up and the Nasdaq um pulled back as well. So we should see some rotation as well. Some, you know, some of those sectors are getting pretty hot. So I want to see them, you know, just, you just want to see natural stuff here in the market here. So, um, yeah, yeah, pretty constructive. Well, there's some really good insights on the trading and great to see that those patterns, you're seeing similarities across small mids and also good constructive patterns in the large end of town. So hopefully that bodes well for trades in the weeks and months ahead. Um, so that point will say thank you very much for dissecting the charts putting forward the best ones giving you some insights into trading psychology gambling psychology as well and uh how to find the right setups thank you Gary. thanks chris i'll leave one little quote for the day uh mark douglas quote here so traders are the zone don't don't need to know and don't care what the market is going to do next they just need to know what they're going to do next what you're doing next that's a critic that's the next move to worry about what you're doing not what the market's doing exactly right right well knowing what to do what your next move can be gary's talked about volatility contraction patterns he's measured out some contractions on the screen if you want to know more about that there's a whole playlist on trading setups that are used and mentioned and on the left hand side there is gary's twitter handle if you want to follow him there 